Welcome to another online edition of The Game. I'm Mark Simon, joined by our co-host, Dr. Melissa Michelson from Menlo College. Um, hey. Kevin, Ke Kevin Mullen is, uh, I like to say he's on assignment, and in fact, he had, had a dental appointment he couldn't get out of, you know, although he has often said that doing the show is a lot like pulling teeth. Anyway, it's great to see you. Um, we have a, a chance today. Our topic is to talk about the September 14th recall election of Governor Gavin Newsom. Um, and so I guess the question first and foremost, uh, Melissa, let's ask a real classic political science question. Is it too easy to recall somebody in California? The, the, the threshold for signatures is the lowest in the country. This is also a case where uh, the, the pro recall people got extra time because of COVID. Um, mm -hmm. and so as a matter of politics of political science, should there be some reform of the California recall law? Wow, that, that is a tricky one to answer, right? On the one hand, you could say, well, it's not really that easy. We've only ever actually recalled one governor back in 2003. If it was super easy, maybe we'd be having recall elections all the time. And pretty much every governor has had a recall signature gathering effort against them. And so you could argue it's, it's not that easy. It just so happens that we've had two now within 20 years. And of course, we don't know how well, how this one's gonna turn out. So what's your definition of too easy? On the other hand, having a recall election in place does make it harder for any elected official to make hard decisions. If you're always having to make sure that the public is with you, that your public approval is high, as opposed to maybe having something that's a long-term plan and you know that by the time four years is up, people will understand why you made the choices you did and public opinion will turn back around because they'll see the long game. Then you could say that any recall election is bad for democracy because it makes elected officials more beholden to the whims of public opinion. So is it too easy? I not necessarily. Well, you, you know, I think there's a whole list of grievances that the no on recall side have, and obviously the yes on recall side, uh, starting with the idea that, um, that these are radical Republicans. We've seen, I'm sure you've seen the ad with Elizabeth Warren. Uh, I, I'd love to see the polling data that shows she's hugely influential in California. But um, first of all- Well, we, she might not be- she might not be hugely influential in California, but the turnout game and they into that, and the base of the Democratic Party does love Elizabeth Warren. So it's it's maybe not necessarily that all Californians are going to be on the edge of their seats to hear what Elizabeth Warren has to say to them, but core Democrat. Oh, we're having some issues here with Melissa's connection. Um, and <laughs> I, I guess I'll just talk for a few minutes while we fix this problem. Um, I traveled um, last week with uh, a no on recall. Are you back? I hope so. Uh, I traveled last oh week my. with uh, a Gosh, no on recall. That face, no. don't put that up again. <laughs> <laughs> what is happening? Oh my yeah, God. well. I think Menlo oh, College man. needs to pay, pay its internet bills. What can I tell you? Um, last week, I, I participated. I went, I went to some rallies uh, organized by Jackie Spear, a no on recall rallies. There were three of them. And, and clearly, there was sort of an umbrage that this was even happening. You know, we're talking about uh, a recall election a little more than a year before the governor has to run for re-election. And... Um, you know, you also have a situation where it, it seems to be very close. If he wins, it's going to be not by the hugest of margins. And we were talking off the air earlier that if he does lose, it's going to be a small number and that the number of votes that the person who gets elected governor will be maybe half of what uh, Newsom got in the recall. So this gets back to the question of whether or not this is really a, a fair exercise or whether it's just sort of mischief uh, being made by people who probably can't beat um, Governor Newsom at the 2020 ballot, 2022 ballot, rather. Um, Rocky, how are we doing with Melissa here? Okay. 
Um, I think what we're going to do is we're going to cut out and we'll come back in a few minutes when we've cleared all this up. Does that sound okay, Rocky? That Folks, that's the legendary Rocky Robinson, the guy who runs Penn TV. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, anyway, that's who I'm talking to. Uh, we're going to take a break and see if we can come back and have this problem solved. Stick around. We'll be right back. Okay, we're uh, we're back on the air. We uh, we haven't necessarily solved Melissa's technical problems, uh, but this is a very nice picture. We can certainly hear her. Let me get to the basic question: Are you surprised that the recall is this close? That the governor is in such danger of of, of being ousted from office, Melissa? Part of me is surprised and part of me is suspicious because we're a very democratic state, right? We all know that Democratic Party registration far ex exceeds Republican Party registration in the state. And, you know, we're a pretty safely blue state. And so on that dimension, it seems surprising. But on the other hand, do I trust the polls? I don't know that I trust the polls. They they've really failed this in the last couple of election cycles. And so I don't know whether to be surprised or to just dismiss the polls as inaccurate. And it's just, it's, I feel like it's very hard to know. Uh, so I think it's entirely possible that he's in more danger than folks might think because there are a lot of intractable problems that California has been dealing with. There is an ongoing crisis of housing and homelessness. There is an ongoing problem of droughts and not enough water. There are a lot of big problems that haven't gotten fixed yet. And folks might be feeling like Gavin could be doing better, but does that mean that Californians are ready to throw out their democratic, democratically elected governor and replace him with a Republican? That seems a little harder to believe. There's, um, is Gavin Newsom in some ways his own worst enemy? I, I, I was thinking the other day, I saw him touring Big Basin, the scene of those horrible fires uh, from a year or two ago. Um, and he was smiling like he was for, going out for a walk in the woods. And I thought, you know, this, that doesn't look like the look he should have on his face. And in the column I'm, I write that runs in the Daily Journal tomorrow, I said, it would be nice to hear him once say, I understand people are angry. I get it. Um, I'm not happy either. Um, but this was a difficult problem. And uh, I think we've set ourselves on the right course. It's like there's, there's a disconnect, it seems to me, on an emotional level with the public. Do you see that in, in Gavin Newsom? Do you think that there's, as I said, do you think in some ways he's his own worst enemy? Yeah, I do. I think he is less able compared to previous governors, um, you know, like Jerry Brown. Did we lose you again, Melissa? Cool you know, you, now? We can hear you now, yes. Oh my gosh. I think this is this like tone deafness of him is reflected even in the big gaff of last year when he had his dinner at the French Laundry. Apparently he, you know, he went through all the channels, he made sure he was following the rules. Technically it was outdoors, et cetera, et cetera. But he didn't get it how that would look to everyone mm -hmm. at a time when everyone's being asked to lock down and stay home, that he's going to this famously extravagant restaurant. So it's kind of this tone deafness. And I think that's the same thing that you're referring to when he's, you know, he's putting on his TV face, making sure he looks good for the cameras when he's out surveying the devastation from the fires. Yeah. So. Um, up or down, you think he's, you think the recall is going to, he's going to be ousted from office? Are you going to pin me down on this one? I well, think no. I, I don't think so. I think the fact that the polls are showing that it's close is going to nudge people to go vote. If Even if they're not a huge Gavin Newsom fan, I think Democrats are nudged now to go vote because they don't want Larry Elder or Kevin Falconer or one of these other guys to be the governor. 
And I, you know, given how much money he's got, I'm assuming that in the last weeks there'll be a huge onslaught of advertising beyond what we're seeing now. That the folks who haven't turned their ballots in and when they first got him in the mail, that he's going to be. Because he, he can afford to. So the question then is, you know, he's been getting a lot of uh, criticism for his message so far. It's the radical Republicans trying to do what they were doing in other states, trying to undermine the electoral process, where in fact this is a legal process that's on, been on the books for over 100 years. Um, what, you know, what's the most effective message? Is it, hey, Democrats, this, this might succeed unless you show up? Or is this an opportunity? You know, should he be taking the opportunity to say, actually, I've been a good governor. I don't deserve to be recalled. <laughs> wow. What the, the message we're getting is definitely be afraid, be very, very afraid. And you should vote no on the recall because, oh my gosh, can you imagine what will happen if a Republican is governor? So that suggests that he knows that maybe his record has not been hugely popular. You know, that we're the state's on fire. Um, you know, you got to wear a mask inside because of COVID. You got to wear a mask outside because of air quality. Um, the water restrictions are going to get worse. The, there's, a, there's nowhere for people to buy an affordable place to live. And so I think it's difficult to run on a platform of success when as the Republican ads point out, like California still has a lot of serious problems. And so, you know, maybe Gavin's doing his best, but I don't know that people are going to feel overwhelmingly like, yeah, he's really helping California fix mm -hmm. its problem. Yeah. Let's assume he doesn't get recalled and, and it, he doesn't just squeak by. He, he gets by with a healthy margin, you know, five to eight, 10 points. It is not that close. Does this help him in 2022? Does it sort of, you know, he's he's already had to energize his campaign machinery much yeah. earlier than he might have had he been running for re-election. I think in one sense it helps him because you know, folks voted for him last time. They Maybe they vote to keep him through the recall. And so maybe that cements people's support for him right, the act of voting for him, the act of voting for him not to be recalled, then not voting for him for re-election would almost be saying, I made the wrong choice before. So if you've already voted for Gavin Newsom one or two times, and then you're asked whether or not you want to vote for Gavin Newsom again, I think for many people, that means they're going to vote yes again, because to do otherwise would be to, to question their previous choices. So I think it helps them. Um, on the other hand, they might, you know, they might be getting a little burnt out mm. hearing from Gavin Newsom wanting their support again, like, oh, man, this guy again. Uh, but I actually think it helps him as long as it's not tight. Like if it's tight and he looks weak, obviously that is a problem. And then, of course, we're much less likely, much more likely to get a strong challenger on the Republican side. Um I would argue that none of these people on the second part of the ballot are strong candidates. But if he narrowly, if Gavin Newsom narrowly survives the recall, that might give somebody else, some other Republican <clears throat> with some experience and with a better, with a better shot, the nudge he needs or she needs to get into the race next time. But that, but that is the problem for the Republicans. And it's you know, it, it, these rallies I went to last week, uh, uh, Kevin Mullen said that they know they can't beat Gavin Newsom in 2022. So they're doing this. Um, the fact is, yeah. is there a Republican? There isn't a Republican statewide office holder. I don't know who the Republican would be who could come into the race seriously. The only other thing that could happen, I suppose, is it could inspire a Democrat to run against him in the primary. Um, and, and that would be um, maybe more problematic than having to run against a Republican. Um, so, yeah. you know, it, <clears throat> or it could be an independent. You know, I think, you know, it could be, it could be another, somebody like Arnold Schwarzenegger who 
maybe identifies as a Republican, but really ha- isn't isn't an office holder, but nevertheless, like thinks like, yeah, I could I could do this. Yeah. Um, you know, we've done that before. So why why not do it again? It, it does seem as though I mean, the recall is on the books. You don't have to have a good reason, quote unquote, to recall somebody. It's not like impeachment where there are mm-hmm. high crimes and misdemeanors. You can recall anybody anytime you want for any reason. But I think most people tend to equate it with that you had to have some kind of malfeasance in office. What's evident from the yes people I saw in the last several days, they don't want Gavin because they don't agree with him. And, and it seems to me that's not a reason to kick somebody out of office. Um, that there has to be, you know, there a lot of presidents and a lot of governors that I've, and senators I've disagreed with. Um, but that's why we have elections. Um, in your, well, in your okay, saying, but you, if you're if you're saying you're going to recall somebody, and whether or not you have to have a reason, is that really any different from when he's up for re-election in 2022 and saying, "Well, we're not going to re-elect you because we don't like you"? I mean, basically, what the recall process is doing is saying we don't want to have to wait until it's time for you to be up for re-election to decide whether or not we like you. And that's mm-hmm. why there's no reason necessary because it's just saying four years is a long time. And maybe sometimes the public doesn't want to wait four years. So. Well, but but that, doesn't that imply there has to be some sort of extreme set of circumstances? Now you laid out, uh, in fact, better than the yes on recall people I've talked to, what the grievances <laughs> might be that, that the fire <laughs> issue seems to be out of hand. I'm not yeah. sure we can blame him for wildfires, but uh, they're, they're, well, you you could you could you could you could look. I'm not trying to help the yes on recall people necessarily. So, but I'm just saying, like you could say, like you know, that he should have known this was coming. Why hasn't he been putting more of PG&E wires underground? Why hasn't he been doing more to create, you know, safe zones and to do preventative burns? Like you. He's been governor and he must have known fire season was coming again. It happens every year. Why wasn't more done to protect us from forest fires? It's so, yeah. So, my point is that you, you, you gave a good list of reasons. Um, yeah. When you talk to the yes and recall people, it's that they never wanted him to be governor, which doesn't strike right. me as a reason to say he shouldn't be governor. Um, but right. you're right. The process is the process and they're allowed to do this. Um, I, I guess the only other question is, and then we'll wrap up this this show. Um, how much chaos is this creating, or does it just feel like chaos? It, you know, if he's ousted and Larry Elder gets twenty percent of the vote, uh, does that really tarnish? That really damage the the sort of the the general well being of the state? Uh, yeah, I think you know you were asking before about whether it's too easy to recall a governor and whether the process needs to be amended. I think if that happens, if Gavin Newsom gets narrowly recalled and then we get a new governor who is elected with a small percentage of the vote, we will be the laughing stock of the world. There will be instant calls to reform the process to prevent this from ever happening again there is a strong likelihood that a lot of changes would be made from the new governor's office that would be unpopular with many Californians. And they would then see, wow, it really did matter that I did that, uh, that we, that we voted for that. Um, So I think we could see some really radical responses to that if that were to happen. Well, Dr. Melissa Michelson, as always, it's good to co-host the show with you. Um, I'm I, I sorry that, that my video wasn't working, and mm-hmm. you know, it's okay. It's a I'll, I'll talk to the president of Menlo College about the, our connectivity. I have no doubt you will. Actually, <laughs> it does occur to me that you're right. If if the recall passes, or if the, the governor's recalled and somebody gets elected with 18 percent of the vote. A lot of East Coast journalists will come to California to write stories about how is California, you know, the, the California dream dead. But you can't yeah. overlook the fact that they're all choosing to come to California in the wintertime, uh, which is always a good excuse. <laughs> to leave, leave Seems like a great excuse. 
Yeah. Great excuse to have to come to California. But yeah, I mean, I think there would be lots of stories written about it, a lot of hand wringing and, and looks at the process. And, you know, why wasn't it that it was just then the lieutenant governor is made the governor or at least the acting governor until a new election can be held? Why isn't it harder to get enough signatures to get this on the ballot? Why is it written this way? Right? If it's if it ends up being Arnold Schwarzenegger, nobody really looks at it right, and he got a majority of the vote, right? Then we didn't really question it. But if it turns out in the way that it hypothetically could, with a minority of Californians electing somebody and and more people wanting to have kept Gavin Newsom, I think that's going to cause a state constitutional crisis. Well, on that cheery note, thank you, Melissa. <laughs> um, this is Mark Simon. This has been another online edition of the game. A little different this time. We didn't have a chance to have our friend Kevin Mullen on, but we'll be back probably right after the recall election uh, to explain what it all means as soon as we figure it out. So on behalf of everybody associated with us, this has been the game. Thank you for being with us.